you're going to like this one because today I'm going to show you 10 new budget knives from 10 different brands that have been by far my most carried. Now, if this is your first time here, thanks for stopping by. I'm Jay. Go ahead and click on that subscribe if you're looking for knife reviews that get right to the point. Now, just like every video, links to buy, coupon codes, and the prices for the knives that I'm going to show you will be down in the description, but also a link to my brand new store. So if you'd like to get your hands on some knife beater merch, follow the link below. Let's get started with number 10. Now, it's kind of a weird one because I couldn't locate like a model name or number for this knife. I just have the brand, which is Alvely. That's A-L-V-E-L-Y. First thing I want to show you here is going to be this handle because you can, it's got like a sort of pistol grip kind of design that's going on, which really is comfortable and conforms to the hand nicely. In fact, it, it reminds me of a well-known knife. It, it feels and it looks like it, the uh, Bestech Warwolf, which as we all know, is the coolest friggin' knife name ever. This very contoured handle, it does, you know, it does have some, some thickness to it at about 0.61 inches thick, which, you know what, that actually kind of explains why it's, it's so comfortable in hand. The 3.4 inch D2 clip point blade that is, of course, riding on a ball bearing pivot, so it has really good out of box action using either that flipper tab, which I just showed you, or a really nice kind of decorative uh, fuller. And you saw it's very spidey flickable, and then it's gonna drop shut. Oh yeah, just a couple shakes. You know, if you look really close, you can kind of you can kind of see that the the blade spine it's actually, it's not flat. It does, it's slightly curved, which I, don't know, I thought that was just a nice little attention to detail. And then of course it's got a really nice uh, deep carry. Well, it's just a standard uh, stamp steel deep carry clip, kind of like the ones you'll see from like Artisan Cutlery, CJRB. But it's also the only issue that I have with this knife because yeah, it's going to be just the one position. So no lefty love. You know, and while we're at it, how about I just go ahead and show you how it cuts. Oh, wow. Very nice. Number nine, I got a Kershaw. This one is the Turismo. Now this little frame lock has about a, it's a, a, a 2.9 inch D2 blade. And then you can see, yeah, those uh, black scales, those are just gonna be stainless steel. Now, some of you know that I honestly, I don't mind Kershaw's uh, speed safe at all I, but I was kind of secretly hoping that this one when it was first announced that it was going to be manual action and that's because well because of the multiple deployment options and you know having those uh, it's just it's just a heck of a lot more fun on a manual fidget knife than it is on the uh, assisted opening one. I gotta tell you, I just love how Kershaw, how they do these like these low profile flipper tabs. And I wish more manufacturers would kind of use this design because then, you know, there's that when it's open, that flipper is not gonna get in the way. And then more of that edge will make contact when you're cutting on a flat surface. And we already established it's a smaller knife. You know, the blade is just under three inches, but the handle, I was uh, I was really happy to see that with my medium sized hand, yeah, I can get a uh, I can get a full four finger grip on there without any trouble. All right, sitting at number eight, I got a buck. This is the Highline. Now this is a really interesting uh, little cleaver that it kind of reminds me of the uh, you see that knife down below the uh, yeah the discontinued Kershaw strobe because they both they both feel like exactly the same in hand. And, you know, it's because, well, they're both frame locks and they both have those uh, like decorative uh, overlays going on. At first, I was a little bit worried about this uh, 3.8 millimeter blade thickness. Yeah, I was kind of surprised to see that the blade stock is that thick because, you know, it's not, well, you can see it's clearly not that tall of a blade, but... Again, if you go ahead and look a little bit closer, you can see, yeah, they gave it a hollow grind. So 
well done because that was exactly the right move with this knife. The action here is really good. I mean, in both directions, you can see, look at that. A couple light shakes, it drops shut. I just wish that you see that, uh, that fuller there over there at the end. I kind of wish that it extended all along the whole, the whole blade, you know, so then I could use it easily as like a second deployment option. I mean, I can, I can still do it. I just got to, well, look at how I have to hold the thing. Yeah. It's almost like too weird and awkward to even do it that way. And then did you see, it's got some really nice kind of uh, those bronze like accents going on even. Yeah. Even look at that on the, uh, on the backspacer there. And then you can choke up on this because that, that forward finger choil is definitely large enough for a finger coming in at number seven is the latest from Kubi. Yeah, they've been on fire lately, is the KU-331. If you're a fan of the KU-321, but you know you, you kind of wanted something a little bit like beefier, well, here you go, because everything about the 331 is, well, it's larger. I mean, even, I gotta show you this, even the front flipper tab, look at this, look at the size of that, that monster and the detent. And the detent on, well, at least my example, super strong. One thing that I'm really happy to see is that they they kind of, they, they corrected the lack of access to the, to the thumb hole on this 321, you know, because it was, at least for me, I always had to kind of dig my thumb in there to be able to, to use it. Well, yeah, they went ahead and, yeah, they really fixed that issue. So slow rolling this open, no trouble. And check this out. They even went ahead and they added a, a forward choil, which, yes, it is large enough. But I got to warn you, for my medium size, it is just barely. The only like potential issue that I've, I've noticed is going to be with the, well, the, the, the texture of the G10. It is, uh, yeah, it's, it's a little bit aggressive. So it will, it'll probably want to go ahead and chew on your pocket. Number six is going to be from O Knife. This one is the splint. And yes, just in case you did not know, O Light, they are absolutely now making pocket knives. Now, I really, I really like the idea of, of having the three different opening options. You know, you have flipper, top flipper, thumb hole. But I just think that that, I think that that top flipper looks a little bit weird and I almost think that this knife would have been fine without it but now that I figured out how to use this front flipper I'm I don't know I'm glad that it's there because it did it took me some practice to get the hang of it because this you notice so the standard flipper it kind of kept getting in the way when I was trying to uh, to open this knife I mean that's exactly the reason why you know, just about every other front flipper out there doesn't have both of these, these two kinds of flippers on the same knife. I mean, they have either one or the other. I see it. I mean, Olight and O Knife, they're, they're really onto something with this because the action, you know, for this being a smaller knife, I mean, it's just under a three inch blade and 690 steel, by the way, that's riding on a ball bearing pivot. The action, man, it is so good. And it was like that fresh out of the box without choking up on this knife. For me, it's about a, it's about a three and a half, like a three and a half finger grip. And if that choil worked as it should, oh yeah, it'd be four finger all the way. Now, number five technically is not a new knife, but it's new to my collection. So from Ferrum Forge, it's the Prolix. Now, if you're somebody that is really like just a huge fan of this Civivi Odium, but you know, you uh, kind of wished it was just a little bit bigger than this Prolix is definitely the knife for you because that's exactly what it is. The blade comes in at right around 2.85 inches. I got to admit, I would just be in, I'd be in absolute heaven if this Prolix if it was like the same size as the Stinger, one of the many things that I just love about this knife is this very generously sized uh, forward finger choil that you can see. So without it, you know, I get about a 
a three finger grip, well, it turns that into four fingers, even as a smaller knife though. I mean, this thing is, the action in both directions is excellent. It's, you know, I'm having a difficult time getting it to, uh, to fail on the deployment and then closing it. Oh yeah, I mean, it, it, it drops shut just like a larger knife. Number four is gonna be from their Vanguard collection. This one is the Kaiser Genie. I think that this micarta version might just be one of the easiest uh, knives out there to to front flip open, which now that I think about it, that kind of explains why it's currently out of stock. You know, this is very similar in size to one of my all time favorite Kaiser designs, the, uh, the, the bag lighter. Now, even though I usually do, I prefer drop point blades over a reverse Tanto, I can confidently say I would pick the Genie if I could only keep one of these, those two knives, yeah, I would keep the Genie because it's the one that has the, it's got the multiple deployment options using the, uh, the front flipper or the thumb hole. And I can even, you know, I know that that's not like, that's not a finger choil, but you still can kind of inch close to it with your hand to sort of choke up. I mean, you can't, you can't really do that with this, uh, bag lighter too. Number three is from a brand I've never heard of before. From Ironfly, this is the Zesty. I'm gonna tell you right now, it by far, this has the best action out of any knife on this list. Wait, wait till you see this. Watch this, watch this. Are you kidding me? I gotta do that one more time because that is just so friggin' fun. The first thing that really caught my eye with this knife is that gorgeous looking drop point blade doesn't it that almost looks like uh almost looks like it's a cross between like i don't know a, a ganzo and a tucson and it's actually it's not a bad value so for just under 60 bucks i think it's around like 57 or 58 here's what you get you get a vg10 steel a obviously a ball bearing pivot because if that was washers that would be pretty incredible um you get some micarta scales and a oh yeah a two position deep carry wire pocket clip and yes now you're already seeing that is in fact a, a glass breaker you know, and my only issue with this knife, and I hate to even bring it up, but hey, you know, that, that's what I do. But it's with the, uh, with the handle, the micarta. Yeah, it's actually, it's kind of smooth, which I'm guessing might be why they put this little, like, uh, this little flare or swell here to maybe make up for that. I don't know. Oh, and if you're not, if you're not crazy about this color, there's also a, uh, they, it comes in tan as well, but yeah, I just, I absolutely love this thing. I mean, I can't, I've been, I can't put it down. Number two is definitely no stranger to my channel from petrified fish. Yeah. That's the beluga. I know, I know that petrified fish is not the only company that, that does this. So I'm not, not trying to pick on them, but it kind of, it does kind of bug me that when a knife company will go ahead and, you know, they'll release like these, uh, the standard versions here, like this one with the G10, they'll release these first. And then all of a sudden, a couple months later, we end up, uh, we get these like, well, these fancy ones, like, uh, this one with the micarta scales. Now I, I totally get why they need to, you know, first, release a version like this because you know they've got to be able to 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 measure and gauge the amount of interest that there's going to be in a new knife but you know it's still it still just doesn't make it any less frustrating you know for us because i ultimately just end up feeling like i've kind of been tricked into buying two of them no you know i didn't have to buy it are right, you ready to see it number one now this is going to be a knife center exclusive from CJRB, yep, that's the Scoria. You know, and I'm the type of person that truly does believe that, you know, some some knife designs, they really do look much better with a, like a, a black coated blade. But this version, this version right here of the Scoria is the one I really think should have been released first. 
I mean, for the most part, it's the same as the original knife, you know, and it's got the, of course, the same awesome action. I haven't been able to put this knife down either, but there's just been a, yeah, a, a few cosmetic differences. This blue kind of like denim micarta, I'm going to tell you right now, it is excellent quality. It is, it's soft and it kind of feels, it's going to sound weird, but kind of fuzzy in hand. Now you can see we get the very same, like a titanium uh, a pocket clip with that. Uh, it's still got like the internal uh, screws that are holding it in. Now, everything on this knife, everything, well, but the body screws and it looks like that pivot. Uh, have that like bronze kind of finish to it. The pivot's got, that's like a little collar around it. But look at that, even the thumb studs. I just think, man, that looks sharp. Be sure to let me know down in the comments which uh, knife off this list was your favorite. Up on the screen, you should be looking at a video. Now, I personally picked that one out for you to go ahead and watch, well, after this. And don't forget, go ahead and click on that subscribe. Hey, happy Turkey Day. I hope you have a good one. I got to run. I'll see you at the next video. I love you guys. Oh, don't forget, check out the store. Take care.